So if yesterday's breakdown was a bear trap, does that mean that today's rally is a bull trap? Well, based on a couple of data points, I'm tempted to say yes, but then I think to myself, wait a second, markets only go up, right? So let's build a game plan for the one final trading day in the week. Remember, markets will be closed for Good Friday. As always, check out the links listed down below in the description. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for 100k by May and stay tuned until the end of today's show. I've got two additional trade ideas to share with you that you won't want to miss. With that said, let's jump right into the charts. So let's kick things off with a closer look at the SPY daily time frame chart. What do we see here in terms of the trend? It's certainly still up, right? We've got lows, higher lows, higher lows, and an offering of a higher low at the bottom of the Tuesday range. Along the way, we had highs, higher highs, and we broke out to a brand new all-time high, the highest high in the trend cycle last Thursday. So this higher low makes a lot of sense because we're coming from a decent location, right? The highest high in the trend sequence. And also, it's staying above the top of key structure, right? We had prior rejection, rejection 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 now had the opportunity to act as support and although we didn't interact with it directly we did find the higher low above that zone which of course is bullish it also continues to confirm the breakout of this balance range just think about it from the perspective of any buyers who are loosely long from in this area of course they wanted to defend 517.25 so we're all good from that point of view and the daily trend is up we've closed basically at an equal high and if we're looking for trend continuation a break of that equal high after re testing in short proximity of time here after a higher low we should just be looking for trend continuation blue sky territory is the upper edge of this week's expected move might be a loose target that we could use around 526.66 aside from that whole and half dollars any intraday levels of that form as we're moving into new all-time high territory if the market's going to reverse here what would it really require from the sellers well you could make the argument that when you're sitting at an equal high in an uptrend it offers the opportunity for a reversal right because now instead of producing, let's just say that we don't get trend continuation, and instead we actually reverse back in the downward direction, now you're only coming from an equal high. If you were to break back down underneath this level, someone could argue that this, of course, is a double top, and then we make a move in the downward direction to potentially reverse the daily trend. But why do I think this is unlikely? Well, let's take a look at the structure of the previous two trading days. On Tuesday, we technically opened on a gap up over the high of Monday's session and over the low of Friday's session. And we know that for the majority of the day, we actually went sideways. And then we all know and remember the end of day nasty sort of, I don't want to call it a crash, but huge route to the downside, right? Relative to the Monday range, it was a big move to the downside. So that closes out a bearish engulfer where the sellers actually make a move underneath Monday's low. So if we're expecting continuation from that bearish momentum, we should at least have expected a retest of 517.25, the top of the previous range. If not worse than that, possibly fighting for price acceptance underneath that level if stronger sellers were truly going to step up. Now, what did we see on the open of today's Wednesday session? It was another gap up over the bearish engulfer high and somewhat, maybe not ironically, but interestingly, we pushed for an opening drive to the downside. We make a bar to bar higher low. We were basically consolidating all afternoon and into the close. There's almost again, just like yesterday's odd liquidation break into the afternoon today, it's an end of day rally, but notice what happens, right? We make a new bar to bar higher high. We close at the equal high. The daily trend is up. So when I go back to the question posed in the intro, is this just a bull trap after a bear trap from Tuesday? I would tend to be inclined to say, no, this is an uptrend that we're looking for continuation out of. And if we can break out and if we can get more price acceptance over 523, we're looking for blue sky territories. I have some concerns that we'll get to when we start talking about the cues, when we start talking about the idea that utilities are leading this move in the upward direction. But if we're just looking at price action objectively, I would have to align more so with the bull side on the daily time frame. Let's get even more granular now on the hourly time frame chart and break this thing down. We know that the major trend is still up. We have lows, higher lows, higher lows, and it looks like this may offer a higher low in the grand scheme of things. But remember headed into this week that the minor trend was actually down. We had highs, lower highs, lower highs on Monday, lows, lower lows, and lower lows. Tuesday is interesting because we're trading near an equal high, but of course we know there's a large breakdown into the afternoon. Everybody knows what happened and that offers a lower low. So the only thing that the bears needed to do, if we're thinking about this objectively, was what? 
they wanted to open somewhere underneath 521 for today's trading session. And you can see that this is actually today's opening print right here. I'll put a little arrow on it, right? So they failed the first go around and that turns this into a spike, right? It's an end of day liquidation break. In my view, it's really just trapped longs with terrible location back here who all decide to sell out at once. That causes this large move to the downside. It's not actually stronger selling taking place. And that's sort of proven by the open over the Tuesday range high. Now, the gift is given right back to the sellers because today on the opening drive, it was a huge move to the downside. And then from there, if the sellers were going to continue to put downward pressure into the market, what we would have looked for into the close is just a lower high underneath. Lo and, you know, lo and behold, that key level, there it is again, 521. A lower high right here would have been ideal for the sellers to continue this pullback to get the deeper retest of 517.25. And I mean, it goes without saying, we all can see what happened here. It was a huge move in the opposite direction to actually break out over 521 and close over this lower high as well. So to me, the sellers have failed in two different instances. The opening today was a bullish indication. The sellers were once again sort of bailed out with the opening drive to the downside, but they failed right here again. There was no lower high on the reattempt of 521. And we've obviously closed higher. So if we start counting trend, now we've got lows, higher lows, highs and a higher high. So are we drifting into a minor uptrend? I would tend to think the answer is yes. And going forward into the end of this week on the hourly time frame chart, there are really a couple of outcomes that satisfy trading for daily continuation in the upward direction, right? First one, fairly obvious, any consolidation here, offering a higher low, good to go. 521 is your key level. It's the Friday low. It's the Monday high. It's the Tuesday consolidation. And we obviously opened above it on today's session. So if we can hold over that level, that would be really impressive for the buyers. Lows, higher lows, looking for continuation in the upward direction. Maybe, just to speculate here a little bit, right? Maybe this turns into some sort of cup and handle like that. It's one possibility. It doesn't have to go that way, but it could, right? The other opportunity here is just straight up continuation. If we get a break up and over five. 523 with momentum, we're looking at blue sky territories. Remember that this is a poor high on the market profile. This has not yet been satisfied from a structural perspective. So if we're trading over 523, I would expect if we test this all time high, a break to blue sky territories, and then we'll reevaluate what's happening with momentum and the strength of the market internals. So I'm really trying to navigate those two situations into the end of this week, either a breakout for continuation or consolidation that stays over 521. If we slip 521, I would be really cautious in this zone. The market's proven to us that it does not want to clearly trend in that area. You saw on Monday, completely sideways activity. Tuesday morning, really sideways activity. Today, after the opening drive to the downside, mostly sideways activity. So I'm not thrilled with trading underneath 521 as an aggressive short. Is it technically, you know, could you find a solid risk reward entry there on a lower high? I mean, technically speaking, yes, but I'm concerned about the follow through through this range. And another thing that just pops up on my radar as we're looking at the hourly time frame chart is remember that this was thin structure, right? This is the FOMC breakout. The fact that the Tuesday liquidation break goes through some of it, but we don't actually get follow through through the thin structure to retest the key zone here at 517.25. I suppose we alluded to this on the daily, but that does strike me as another failure from the sellers. Why were they unable to get to that key retest? So everything on the daily, on the hourly chart here, to me, would align with looking for this in the upward direction, looking for this in the upward direction, trying to be a buyer here, trying to be a buyer here, right? And then if we were to get something like this, a little bit more neutral until we get more information and that possibly requires waiting for next week after we get sort of through the holiday and the core PCE announcement, which comes out on Friday morning. Remember that the government is open, but the market is closed. Let's take a look at the anchored view apps intraday because this is supporting the idea of 521. As long as pullbacks are above that, we are good to go. This is your anchored view app from the FOMC breakout, as well as the all-time high. Anything underneath, again, this would sort of argue for the neutrality as long as we're above this anchored view app. And I still think that this could offer a higher low near that 517.25. Now we'll throw on the Fibonacci's because this is also somewhat interesting. Let me clear up those fibs, excuse me, the anchored view apps, just so we can have a little bit more breathing space when we're looking at this. So we'll come in from the low. This is the last higher low on the daily, right? We don't want to measure this yet, but we'll come in from the last higher low up to the all time high. And did we get a reasonable pullback? The answer is yes. I mean, look at where the 38.2 is. It was arbitrarily in that structure. It's something that we mentioned in the weekend update. There it was, right? So this is making sense as healthy bull flag consolidation from this point of view on the hourly timeframe. There's another Fibonacci perspective we could use from the FOMC lows 
to the all-time high, and what level did we hold? It's the 61.8, and as we know, this is always a Fibonacci line in the sand. If you spend time above it, okay, you're still hanging on. If you spend time underneath it, the odds dramatically increase for a 100% retracement, which would technically bring us underneath that key 517.25 level. That obviously did not happen, and it's exactly where the sellers stopped on the Tuesday end of day session. So with that said, I think based on purely the price action and the structure in front of us, we do want to align with the bullish side of the trade. But as we work our way through some supporting evidence, I don't want you to forget or sort of miss that utilities did lead and the NASDAQ was relatively weak on today's session. So let's take a look through the market internals now. So if you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. We'll begin with our market breadth, the volume flows of the market. On today's session, we were certainly substantial up in over 300 million as we got this end of day move in the upward direction. And if we compare that to what happened on Tuesday, Tuesday is not even close to substantial in the downward direction. I think we closed out there. What was it? Negative 68 million, not even triple digits on the millions there. Net flows on the week are positive, 282 million. It's not quite substantial. Around 500 is what we're looking for by the Wednesday session. We're not all the way there yet, uh, but it is a big step in the right direction. Seeing what happened on today's session here, you can make the same comparison out of the advanced decliner. When you get this big end of day drop, it's happening from a positive advanced decline line compared to today's move in the upward direction. It's sort of more confirming with that move in trend higher zone for a majority of the day. We're close to that 1500 mark. If we take a look at the ticks, mainly the cumulatives, same thing, really flat neutral day all of Tuesday, end of day breakdown, hardly even gets the cumulative build negative. And today's session is a clear ramp throughout the duration of the day. It's not just like we had this end of, or, you know, flat and then end of day ramp like this, not as aggressive as what we had on Tuesday. Don't get me wrong. It could have been stronger in the morning session, getting to something that maybe looked like this in terms of the slope of the, uh, the build. But nonetheless, I look at the chart and I look at the participation at the exchange level, and I'm much more of a believer in what happened into today's end of day versus what happened into the end of day on Tuesday. And I think that we can see that reflected in the data. So is this just a bull trap in the upward direction when we look at the exchange level data? This is another data point that says absolutely not. Market profile is always exhibit B. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. We can clearly see that Monday was fairly boring. It was compressed, not much to talk about there. Tuesday, here's the value area compared to the spike that happened into the end of day. So interesting that the value area was technically higher than the Monday session. Here is today's Wednesday value area, which is overlapping to down. The point of control is certainly in the downward direction. And here is our spike. So when I think about this objectively, right, the position could technically be being held from a low lower location on the overall charts. However, if we think about where the market's comfortable transacting, it's generally speaking this week, somewhere in this zone. So just like this was maybe an overblown move to the downside that clearly retraced today, could this be an overblown move in the upward direction that has the opportunity to retrace tomorrow? I think the answer is yes, but remembering the daily trend, the hourly trend, if we can spot the higher low here, it's satisfying the value area from today's session where it was lower in the individual profile, but it's it's also satisfying the value from the Tuesday session, which was higher in the individual profile. So when I think back to trends and the exchange level data from the market internals, I would be more inclined to be a pullback buyer here out of the ES and just the S&P in general, than I would have been inclined to be a lower high seller on the retest of value area low at this area here. For an intraday scalp, that's fine. But in the grand sense of what the market's trying to do, I think that this is much more constructive of an opportunity. If we take a second to talk talk about spike rules because they will be in play for tomorrow's session. It's really three outcomes that we're looking for that really revolve around this M period, right? M period is what constitutes the spike. You can see fairly thin volume at price. So if we open on a gap up over the top of the spike, the market should in theory auction in the upward direction until we find a new group of sellers. And what do we know about auctioning in the upward direction? That's new all time highs, right? So all time highs is what happens if we open on a gap up, we should get some sort of gap and go, or I would be inclined to trade in the direction of a gap and go. If we open in the spike, keep it simple, stupid, the KISS method, right? You're looking for a reaction at the high of day or the base of the spike to give you the number in the ES. We're talking about 52.95. 52.95. If we open under the base of the spike, in theory, all of these buyers are technically trapped and the market should auction lower to retest the low of day or value area low. We do have a poor low. You can see ENF periods sideways down at the bottom. So that could be a potential target. But remember, the daily trend is also in play here. If we open in the spike or if we open under the spike and battle up for something that does this over that, you could just use Tuesday's high of day, the base of the spike, 
52.95. If we can get that, I wouldn't be aiming at this poor low. If we have an aggressive downtrend and we open underneath and, you know, we get a 15 minute downtrend that looks like this, it acts as a reasonable target. But primary outcomes headed into the Thursday trading session are, can we open in the spike and use the base as support? Or can we open over the top of the spike and look for follow through into new all time highs? Let's change gears now to the QQQ on the daily time frame chart because clearly one of these things is not like the other. If we're thinking about that first key question we always ask, what's going on from a trend point of view, this is a massive set of equal lows and maybe, just maybe, you have the opportunity for higher lows to be found up here. In that light, you would be thinking of this as daily bull flag consolidation. The only issue with that is that we're still technically trying to resolve this set of highs from in the past. This gap up to a new all-time high wasn't really accepted well, and you can see that a majority of these highs are actually back down underneath the two previous locations that we've just pointed out here and here. So on the NASDAQ daily, we are seeing a little bit of relative weakness. I want to, again, reinforce the opportunity for a higher low happening here, and it is at a key level. We'll see this on the hourly chart at 441.50. So if we are going to maintain a bullish edge across the broad market, remembering that the NASDAQ has huge influence over the S&P 500, if we can hold up over 441.50 and trade at least to the equal high at 449.25, I would be more impressed and more confident in the long side nature of the market. If we're consolidating in this range and threatening some sort of drift back down towards this level after today's lower wick directly off of it, once again, that's at 441.50, I would have much larger concerns about being skeptical of the new all-time high possibly or trend continuation possibly out of the S&P 500. So key levels on your QQQ daily, ignore some of the you know intermingled levels here, but the main ones, 441.50, today's low of day, and the all-time high level here at 449.25. You want at least an equal high or continued hold of 441.50 if the daily chart is going to remain constructive. If we fall underneath that, it would be totally reasonable to at least expect a retest of 438.50, if not a full reattempt to the bottom end of the range. Why is that? Well, on the daily chart, instead of like the S&Ps having a range breakout, you would have a look above lower high failure. If we crack this level, you're not getting a daily high or low. The target's always the bottom end of the range. You would be getting super support with your daily 50 SMA if it happens in a very short period of time. But that, of course, is a bearish drag for the broad market as a whole. Let's move. And, you know, in terms of structure, it's similar to the S&Ps, but somewhat different. You'll notice that we did not print a bearish engulfer on the Tuesday session. Today, we undercut the low. We made a new low, but rebounded to close inside the previous day's range, whereas the S&Ps closed over the previous day's range. So there's a little bit of give and take here. It's maybe not on the bar to bar count as bad as it might seem. Uh, but if we take a look at the hourly chart, I think this still really starts to illuminate things, right? You'll notice where is the consolidation on the Tuesday session? I think that this is what we want to focus on. So I'm really going to zoom in on this so we can you know, understand exactly what's taken place here. The Tuesday consolidation is all here, and it's a massive flush point for the end of day breakdown, right? Today, we did not open on a gap up over that Tuesday high. So, okay, if the buyers were going to be constructive opening inside of this consolidation range, ideally, you would have just held a higher low over 445.50. That would have been good to go. Fine. This is all liquidation break. You have trapped sellers at the lows. If they're going to squeeze out, maybe a break through this high, set something up for the all-time high, right? That would have been a possibility on the hold of this, but we can clearly see with hindsight, right? That that did not happen. And instead, there was a pretty firm break, like out of the out of the opening bell. It's a pretty firm break in the downward direction. There was a lot of relative weakness in the Magnificent Seven cohort, right? So big opening drive, all this consolidation made a new low, which the S&Ps did not. So on the bar to bar count, we have a new low. And look at where we've closed. This is the most important takeaway out of, you know, the entire intermarket dynamic right now, is that the NASDAQ still has an opportunity to offer this lower high underneath four 45.50. If you notice into the end of the week on the Thursday trading session, right, that you're rejecting that level out of the QQQs, I'd be very, very skeptical about follow through out of the S&Ps into new all time highs right? So that is the main takeaway from an intermarket dynamics perspective. This lower high is a threat. And then an equal low down here sort of sets up the failure to hold on to a daily higher low. There's that 441.50 level we were just discussing. The door is open underneath. All right. So very, very closely monitoring this QQQ hourly downtrend that we're still technically in, right? You had highs, lower highs, 
offering of a lower high here, 445.50, and along the way, lows, lower lows, lower lows, and today's session, technically lower lows. So that is, uh, again, I hate to keep repeating it, but this is the biggest watch. Can we get that hourly lower high underneath 445.50? Or in the flip side of the coin, right, if you're trying to trade the market bullish, then what you would want to see is, Matt, like enough about the lower high, be a little bit more optimistic, man. Let's see if we can get a higher low above, right? If that happens, okay, maybe the door is open for the S&Ps to move in the upward direction. And then you could start to build the argument that maybe maybe this starts to turn into inverted head and shoulders. Let's not jump the gun on it, just like we were talking about the cup and handle over on the S&Ps, but it's one possible idea, right? So that is really the name of the game out of the QQQ. Let's take a look very briefly at our view apps intraday, see what's going on here. So yeah, just opposite to the S&P, your key level is now confluence with the all-time high and the FOMC uh, breakout view app. So if that's going to reject, it would be a logical place for the market to sort of struggle, right? Let's take out the Fibonacci's from the FOMC low to the all-time high. And we did still technically hold on to the 61.8, so good to go on that metric there, but we are struggling near the 38.2. You are getting confluence, so just reinforcing the idea of the importance of 445.50. And then we'll come in with one more Fibonacci sort of perspective just to stay congruent to what we did in the S&Ps, which was the last higher low, which is basically equal lows out of the NASDAQ, right? And you are over the 38.2. So if you wanted to be optimistic, you're measuring this as a bull flag here. If you wanna be a little bit more pessimistic, you could probably also come in from the highs down to the lows. And yeah, we're just like, this is an opportunity to reject the 50% retracement, the anchored view apps, everything that we've just discussed. So key levels are being reinforced by our sort of supporting evidence, anchored view apps and Fibonacci's. We know that it's all eyes on 445.50, lower high below, danger zone, looking for an equal low at 441.50, then the door is open. Or if we can recapture here, maybe we get the inverted head and shoulders one step at a time. But this, I think everybody can agree is your key level. So when I think about, is it a bull trap in the S&P? Well, it comes with a little bit of nuance, right? If the QQQ finds a lower high underneath, yes, maybe it's a bull trap in the S&Ps. If the Qs can recapture, probably not a bull trap in the S&Ps. I would look for follow through in the upward direction. Let's move on over to our market internals for the NASDAQ side of things. Solid inflows on today's session. Near trend higher zone for a majority of the day. A little bit deeper of a pullback off of the open though. Cumulative build speaks for itself pretty strong down below here. Um, and I, I would say in terms of participation today, the end of day rally was decent. It was decent, but structurally, you're still getting that threat of the lower high. So I'd be open-minded to sort of getting that recapture of it in the higher low above based on what we can see here, based on what we can see here, and based on what we can see here. The Tuesday breakdown into that afternoon session, a little bit stronger than the S&Ps, not much in terms of volume flows, and the cumulative build is much more just net negative on the day, but not substantial, right? Not even close to substantial. Just to give you an idea of what substantial is, let's really back this thing out, see if we can find an example. There you go, 313, right? Where we we close out negative 8,000. That's a substantial downside. Read obviously Tuesday was not even close with more of a read around negative 2,600. Let's move on over to the market profile for the NASDAQ and wrap up the NQ side of things. You'll notice over here that the value area is actually much different in terms of the average value for the week, right? So here's Monday, here's Tuesday, here's today's Wednesday session. It's clearly breakaway to the downside. Obviously your A period single prints represent some sort of breakdown from this value area, rejecting that, rejecting this point of control is definitively lower from both of those areas. And you do have a decent excess low, obviously you have a nice excess high, but you do not have spike rules in place, right? This A period print is in the beginning of the session, not the end of the session. So it's not like we have trapped buyers or sellers at the high of day. They're just there from the opening bell. It's not like the market just cut off because of the of the uh, the closing bell. No, they, they had their opportunity during the session. So this migration of value in the downward direction does strike me as being another bearish reason to say it's very possible that you you could reject for that lower high. This would be the equivalent of that 445.50 level, right? It's the value area low of the Tuesday session. You could easily reject that, keep all of these buyers late to the, not even late to the party, but just stuck sideways in the consolidation. That's overhead supply. It continues to weigh on price in the downward direction. So all of this stuff is top of mind. And once again, the biggest sort of inflection point for tomorrow's session on the QQQ, it's that 445.50. And on the NQ futures, we're talking about something closer to 18 532. 18,530, if you like nice round numbers, 18,530 would be the number that I use. It's basically the value area low from the previous day session, Tuesday session. You know, you could round up or down by about five points, but that is it out of the NASDAQ.
And lastly for the big three is IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps on a weekly time frame chart. And the reason we want to start on the weekly is because if we're thinking about the question, is this just a bull trap in the S&P 500, the IWM weekly chart would suggest no. The breakout of the weekly balance range over here on small caps would suggest to me that the broad market rally is literally broadening out in terms of participation. And you'll see if the IWM is outperforming the QQQ by a substantial margin, that's going to act as a huge tailwind for your S&P 500 itself and might be one of the reasons that help explain why the S&P is closed with relative strength compared to the tech sector in isolation, right? So let's drop it on down to the daily time frame chart. Let's get even more granular here and we'll do the full top down analysis. You can see that we have lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, and higher lows at the bottom of the Tuesday range. So the daily trend is up. Now it's just a matter of seeing if we can get bigger follow through up and over this level at 208. This is the first daily close over 208. And if this is a general balance range and we're starting to break out, I'm not as concerned about the upper edge of the weekly expected move providing big resistance. Based on a technical breakout, I think we can see follow through much closer towards that structural target at 211.50 or maybe even a range double closer to 212.50, right? So daily has room to run in the upward direction if this is a classic bull flag that's breaking out. We've got our day one breakout. Let's see if we can get day two follow through in the upward direction. If you're a buyer here and you're willing to withstand a higher low pullback, ideally, you just don't violate today's opening print, which is around 206.50. And we'll see why right now on the hourly time frame chart. And the reason for 206.50 is because if this is sort of a very sloppy yet there double bottom, that represents your neckline. And it's also the right shoulder of the previous head and shoulders, which offered the beginning of the daily trend reversal in the downward direction, right? Remember that this breakdown right here was pretty key to the downside. So if this is going to stick in the upward direction, you really want to use that right shoulder. You want to use the neckline of the double bottom. 206.50 is a new line in the sand on the daily time frame chart. The other thing to point out here on the IWM is look at the structure that actually played out this week. Instead of it just being a very classic liquidation break like it was in the S&P and the NASDAQ, the IWM and small caps actually had a developed downtrend on the Tuesday session, right? There was clearly an offering of a lower high coming from momentum in the morning, whereas the, uh, the QQQ and the S&Ps were sideways in the morning and only broke down into the bell. So the fact that we did actually, you could start to consider that stronger sellers, right? The lower high was offered and we made a new low underneath all these other lows. You had stronger sellers in small caps. Look at where we open. It's over that uh, lower high. You support in the lower wick of the first hourly bar here, and then it's off to the races. I mean, come on, that is a you know much more pure indication of a failure from the sellers here and then a runaway freight train in the upward direction from the buyers into the close, making a high after a substantial trend had already happened on the day's session. So if we're thinking about, again, the bullish nature of the broad market rally broadening out, if the IWM can keep this style breakout up, if it can get a day two follow through move, it's probably not a bull trap over in the S&P 500, even if the QQQ continues to be weak in that sideways daily balance range that we were just sort of exploring, right? So on the hourly time frame chart, what are a couple of outcomes here? Obviously, higher low pullback over 208 is ideal. This is also fine down here, holding over 206.50. I would become more neutral on the market if we start to do something like this with acceptance underneath 206.50. Let's bring out the anchored view apps intraday, see where these are offering confluence, beautiful sort of suggestion of that 206.50 or higher based on the aggressive curling up into the close. And that's of course due to the big volume inflows into the close. So that's looking good over time. Let's say that we just sort of consolidate up here on uh, Thursday. I was about to say Friday, Thursday, then early next week, we get a deeper pullback. If something like this and you're playing catch up with the anchored view apps, that could be beautiful off of 208, right? So that's just one possibility to of course, keep us bullish. If we do fall underneath, you have the opportunity for these to act as arbitrary support. So I wouldn't be bearish under 206.50, a little bit more neutral in there. And then the bear edge probably comes back out if we start breaking down. You know, honestly, like I hate... This is a little bit of a mixed opinion, right? A little bit of a mixed opinion, but I'm going to throw it out there. I think that as long as we're over 204, and maybe this is just a daily line in the sand. So let's let's treat it this way, right? Hourly line in the sand, probably that 206.50. I mean, yes, you would ideally want a daily higher low over this cluster. But if we can stay over the neckline of this as a head and shoulders, I think we're okay in the grand scheme of things about the IWM, you know, small caps broadening out the market rally as long as we're over 204. So again, there's no indication of this. Notice that we had the bearish engulfer. It completely failed. Strong bullish move to the upside, big higher high close. You know, there's no indication of this, but 
If there is a pullback and we can hold 204, that to me would be the ultimate line in the sand on the daily time frame chart, right? Anything underneath that, maybe you start to threaten like a weekly double top. Let's not get too speculative right now. Uh, for based on what I can see, I would argue that this is a primary outcome. This is a primary outcome. And if we're in here, it'd be more neutral, but probably maintaining a more bullish edge as we've just sort of walked through over that 204. So that's my take out of the IWM. And again, in terms of is it a bull trap in the S&Ps? If we're getting performance like this, probably not. Here we go over to the internals for the Russell side, substantial volume inflows on today's session, even with the aggressive trend day, which I would argue was Tuesday, right? You did not have substantial volume outflows at the exchange level. Similar comments over here, mostly positive, although trending aggressively low. Lower, mostly positive on Tuesday. Today's session is in trend higher zone. Huge, strong cumulative build out of the tick down below. Neutral on Tuesday, no indications of stronger sellers, even though you had a more aggressive trend day in the downward direction. I really want to reinforce that idea there, right? So small caps to me are supporting evidence for continuation in the upward direction. Let's jump on over to the market profile on the Russell futures. And this is another decent uh, sort of indication in my view. Notice that the value area is here. Value areas here. So that's Monday. Here's Tuesday. Here is today's Wednesday session. It's a really elongated value area, which of course is suggestive of a trend day in the first place. But notice that the point of control is over the value area from here. It's also over the high of the previous day session. And by the nature of being that, obviously it's over the high of the Monday session. So this does strike me as follow through, strong follow through with volume commitment at key levels, higher levels, uh, showing acceptance from the buyers. Now we do have a spike because this is M period out of the Russell futures. So just like the S&Ps, if we open over the spike looking for the market to auction higher, that's bullish for the S&P 500. If we open in the spike here, a little bit more neutral looking for inflections at the highs and lows of the spike. I'll give you the base right now out of the Russell futures. That's going to be at 21.29.40. 21.29.40 would be the level that I use. And of course, if we can hold this for a higher low, that's basically, it's going to look very similar too. If we just go back over here really quick uh, to our, let's go over to the IWM. It's going to be close to a retest of this prior high right there. So that would be 208.83 on your IWM cash market here. Okay, so just keep that in mind if you're looking for that sort of pullback. Again, that's totally in alignment with the hold over 208. So overall, IWM, another bullish data point, I think, feather in the cap for the buyers in the S&P 500. With only one trading day left in the week, let's do a speed round through our supporting evidence section here, and we'll begin with the S&P sectors. Utilities lead the pack up 1.81%, followed by the real estate sector 1.58%, and then materials up 1.45%. At the bottom end of the barrel, it's the semiconductors, not technically a sector, but only down 15 basis points. It's the only red name on the list. And then it's just laggards. We have communications up 25 basis points and the tech sector only up 38 basis points. So it's not that posture is great. Don't get me wrong. Utilities are lightweight and defer defensive. And as we know, the tech sector is the heaviest weight and most risk on sector that we have. I'll just put RO here for risk on. And so posture is not fantastic as we're approaching an equal high, all time high. However, it's not nearly as bad as if the XLK was down, let's just say like 2%. If if that was the picture, then absolutely, we're not looking for follow through here at the all time high, I'd be very cautious of some sort of pullback in the XLU, pulling the rug from underneath us and a larger drawdown. But obviously, with the numbers in front of us right here, it's really not the end of the world. And remember, at some point, upward pressure is still upward pressure. So let's take a look at these structural charts. I mean, we're just getting a balance range break out of utilities. It's not like we're threatening a new all time high. And this is what's pushing markets towards its new all time high, right? We're just getting a little bit of upward pressure, some follow through through from this segment. So not overly concerned with that. I think what we want to be focused on is like, where's the threat to the downside? So is real estate providing a threat to the downside? I would think not. This is upward pressure. Let's take a look at materials, new all-time high today. That of course is bullish. XLV Healthcare. Um, I've got to hand it to the guy on Twitter. I'll put a screenshot up now. Um, I thought that this was going to act as a risk for a flush point and we got a gap and go. So equal highs. I'll always give credit where credit is due. That looks bullish, right? This is the second heaviest weighted sector by market cap. Yes, it's D for defensive, but the market's not going to fall apart aggressively if healthcare is gapping up towards new all-time highs, right? Next up, consumer discretionary. Is this bullish or bearish? Is there a threat to the upside or the downside? This looks like a higher low to me. This looks like the opportunity for an equal high breakout. Looks more bullish than bearish. Financials, new sort of highs over here looking great. I mean, if we can just crack this equal high now at uh, 42, let's call it, over 42, that's huge upward pressure for the S&P. As a matter of fact, we've got to throw that level on together. I think we know the rules, round numbers only up here in the penthouse. There we go. 
so consolidation is fine. I mean, the uptrend is glaringly strong and intact as long as we're over that 4120. No threat to the downside there. We'll get to the TLT in a moment. Here's the XLP. Triple top coming in after a consecutive series of higher lows. Looks more like an ascending triangle to me. If we can break out over that, Again, that's bullish pressure, regardless of this, you know, if this is a D for defensive sector, if this is breaking out, it's upward pressure for the S&P. I hate to break it to you. Here's the XLE energy sector, right? Monthly breakout happens over 94.25. Is it inflationary? Yes. But is it upward pressure for the S&P? Also, yes, right? We're not breaking down aggressively. You can see that the sort of large bear bar from the Tuesday session came directly into this previous flat top, supported over it today. That looks more constructive to me. We'll change our tone if we're underneath, but energy is such a lightweight sector, wouldn't make or break the S&P. Let's move along to the industrials, right back up towards all-time highs. Looks more bullish than bearish to me. Good to go there. XLK, here's where we got to talk, right? So when we're thinking about where's the opportunity for a threat to the downside, everything that we've covered so far looks pretty constructive to the upside. The XLK, on the other hand, is not so certain kind of towards the midpoint of this as a range. I would try to give the buyers the benefit of the doubt here, noting that we have lows and the opportunity for higher lows. I would also point out that we undercut the Tuesday low and closed near the highs of the Tuesday session compared to the lows. So trying to give the buyers the benefit of the doubt, but if the XLK breaks down in here and everything else also sees a pullback, that's probably where it's a bull trap in the S&Ps. If the XLK is mildly sideways, but we're getting follow through out of all of those other sectors that we just looked at, notably the XLV and the XLF, it's not a bull trap in the S&P 500, right? If the XLK is just going sideways here, and then when and if we come in for something that does that, okay, much more of a red flag for the market. But based on today's structure, I wouldn't say that that is necessarily top of mind. Here's communications to finish up our lineup. And again, any any threats to the downside, any big issues with this chart? No, it's just a bull flag directly into these equal highs. If we can take it out at 82.15, looking for upside. That is bullish pressure for the market. And last but not least, semis. What do we see over here? If there was ever an opportunity for a breakdown, you had this gap underneath us. We've closed that gap, gap fill reversal, and closed back right at the low of the Tuesday session. Sellers, where are you? If you're gonna, if, if if you're arguing that the market's bearish, if you're arguing that this thing is overbought, it's got to come crashing, uh, everything's gonna fall, and it's gonna gonna go to hell in a handbasket. Where are you? Because as of right now, this is a bullish indication. I'm not saying that this can't be offered as a lower high. It's certainly an opportunity. But if there was ever an individual session to start to see a larger breakdown and at least test the neckline of this, right? A breakdown through the gap, close the thin structure, close weak on the lows, then get follow through, that would have made a lot of sense. But instead, we can clearly see buyers stepping up. If you do something that looks like this, highs, 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 right? Holding as support now, that's constructive for a move in the upward direction. Could this not act as a higher low? It absolutely could. It absolutely could. Now, it's not ideal because, again, we have to acknowledge both sides of the coin. This is certainly a lower high, but range compression is much better than straight up range re or, excuse me, uh, trend reversal onto some sort of equal low like this. So still trying to align with giving the buyers the benefit of the doubt. I, won't, I don't want to be like overly bullish here. Don't get me wrong. It's not great that utilities have led the pack, but when we just look at things objectively, I don't see much of a downside threat out there structurally across all of the sectors so far. And if we take a look at sort of the monthly, or not monthly, but the, um, the sector ratio grid here, and the performance relative to the S&P, if you're not familiar with the screen, check out the video tutorial on the top right-hand corner. I think that this, again, we know what's going on here. The XLK is sideways. The XLF continues to need to outperform there if we're going to be you know, good to go in the S&Ps. Same thing over here with the healthcare sector. Because it's the second heaviest weighted sector, we probably want to see it kiss the 50 SMA, probably not much more than that. I would like to see, just to give you an idea, I would like to see the XLV do something like this. Financials continue like this. As this is happening, you probably get a little bit more underperformance from tech. And then when and if this can reverse reverse, when this comes for a pullback, that's when I want to see the tech sector come back in to its 50 SMA. That would be the ideal way that this plays out. Does it have to happen that way? No, not necessarily, but it's one thing to be keeping an eye on if you're looking for that rotation between risk on and risk off, right? If we look at the risk off sectors, these are the bottom four, right? Although we notice that the XLP is higher in the list here, I guess towards the midpoint, right? It's still underneath the 50 SMA. The XLU is starting to break a descending 50 SMA, so probably much more of a firm watch here out of utilities on a relative basis walking forward but it's not yet in like this glaring uptrend that's, you know, oh my goodness, markets again are, are completely, you know, uh, and utterly unsustainable here. It's not the case. It's just not the case. Upward pressure is upward pressure for now. Let's take a look at some of the more specialized ratios. Again, speed round through them. This is still bullish as it's consolidating sideways. Would be concerned if it breaks down. Same concept over here. We're right at the breakdown point. If it really accelerates tomorrow, larger red flag. We'll see how we end the week there and we'll recap on Saturday. Let's bring out apples to apples. This is over the 50 SMA away 
from this low. It's toward the midpoint of this as an overall range, but nonetheless, it's definitely more bullish than being down here. So I would still argue we have a risk on edge. Let's take a look at SMH XLV. And this is coming into the equal low. If it breaks down more similar to the XLK XLU, if it breaks down through the neckline, we'll change our tone, but we're just not there yet. And based on all the patterns I just saw as we were navigating through the sectors, it doesn't seem like a huge breakdown is imminent. Let's take a look at the dollar and see what's going on. Any downward pressure here? Not really. Sideways in a micro range inside of the overall range, which is this right here, right? So no concerns out of the dollar. If we take a look at gold, gold had pulled back fairly aggressively after making that new high contract roll in here. So I'm, I'm never going to claim to be something I'm not. I'm not an active gold trader. So, you know, we're just near these highs. I suppose that's okay for the continuation, but I'm not entirely sure what the contract roll ultimately means uh, for gold and, and how folks normally sort of navigate that for now. It didn't really seem to cause a huge mispricing. It looks like the gap up sort of happened before the official close of the contract there. But uh, regardless, gold being bullish means what for the dollar, right? Downward pressure. What does that mean for equities? Certainly moving in the upward direction. Let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at silver actually, because I don't think silver and gold roll at the same time. Yeah, there we go. So silver can give us a little bit more insight here. I think that this pullback has been mild and manageable. Uh, ideally, it would just hold on to this level, right? Previous resistance acts as support. We had sort of a hammer-esque bar print around that. If we can trade back up through some of this thin structure, that would be bullish for, again, the downward pressure on the dollar, alleviating and providing upward pressure for equities. Let's move along to the TNX, the interest rates on the 10-year side of things. And you'll notice that we're starting to break down here. I believe that this is going to be probably a very key inflection point uh, or just watch out of rates over the next little bit, especially as we get the PCE on the Friday session, right, as the markets are closed. I'm curious to see whether or not this turns into a double top or if this continues to play out as like an ascending triangle, higher low, and then some sort of break up and over 4.33. I really think it depends on what Jerome Powell has to say here, at least in the immediate term uh, on Friday, as to whether or not we get underneath this 4.2 or if we crack over the 4.33. Uh, so very, very closely monitoring interest rates here for now. This breakdown seemingly would be helpful for the NASDAQ side of the market, but that was not the case today. Remember, we don't want rates to fall aggressively for the wrong reasons. So to sort of combat this, let's take a look at the inverted ZT. No sharp movements out of this. And remember that this is the two-year, which the Fed tracks very closely. It's basically a mirror for the tracker tool, which is over here. Let's take a very brief look. These odds are still fairly elevated in my view. Uh, I would personally try to not personally, but what I think should be taking place and my opinions versus the market is obviously does not have to marry up. And that's the beauty of markets, right? But this is a little bit subjective here compared to our normal objective take. I would tend to imagine more appropriately, we would have something like 50-50 odds for a pause versus a cut. Uh, and the reasoning behind that, we got the durable goods orders. If we take a look at this, we got the durable goods on Tuesday morning and they came in just fine right? Durable goods coming in fine means that there's some sort of demand still out there, obviously, right? And you can see consumer confidence came in a little bit, you know, lighter here. I just don't think like based on these numbers, mainly out of durable goods, right? It just doesn't seem as though there would be a requirement for aggressive rate cuts. The consumer seems to be doing fine there, right? Um, so that is that. We know that we get GDP on Thursday. That's tomorrow morning at 8.30. Come join us up in the penthouse suites for coffee and donuts on me. We've got unemployment claims as well at 8.30. That's everything. Thursday. Uh, interested to see how the labor market continues to perform. As long as this is stable and steady, again, it doesn't seem to me that there would be any logical reason for higher odds of a cut here when we know consumer spending seems to be fine. Durable goods orders came in fine. Uh, the labor market remains robust and inflation is still somewhat too hot. So why are we pricing in a cut? It's still not adding up in my head. Um, I'm trying to be open-minded to the idea that as inflation comes down and rates remain stable, technically speaking, the real rate is increasing, right? So trying to play that game, but uh, overall, that's my take on the Fed, at least for today's session. We'll dive into it after we learn what Powell says on the Friday session. Here is the earnings calendar. After the close today is RH, not Robinhood, but Restoration Hardware for your higher end consumer, seeing how the spending is going over there. Maybe we'll take a brief look at the chart and see how it reacted. But let's finish up our risk appetite look, the data points here. Let's go over to the TLT ratio to the S&Ps. It's still very much so suppressed in this as an overall downtrend. Mild, mild flattening taking place right now, but it's certainly not enough to go out there and say, oh my goodness, the risk appetite for equities has vanished. I still think that this is bullish for the S&P. Let's take a look at bonds in relationship to themselves. Remember that we have some concerns here about this, 
producing higher lows. So watching attentively to see whether or not those continue to maintain themselves or if we break down. Notice that we're sort of coming from equal slash lower highs, equal slash lower highs here, equal slash lower highs here. So if we do break down, we're back in a downtrend. That is uh, fairly noteworthy out of the shorter end of the curve there. Let's take a look now at the credit spreads. These contracted sort of big time today. You'll see a big down tick here and a big down tick here. That, of course, is bullish for risk appetite in equities. Could it be some funky business towards the end of the quarter? I mean, it's possible, but I, I don't really subscribe to the idea uh, that, you know, you want to try to pull off a trade just based on like quarterly rebalancing. Just let it do its thing and then we'll sort of navigate the price action at face value. HYG moving in the upward direction, sort of nice with the uh, S&Ps down below. So offering decent amounts of sort of uh, convergence instead of divergence, right, from one another, they're working in lockstep. And as we know, 7660 is still a larger concern to the downside. Bitcoin is moving right back up towards those highs, maybe a lower high here, but for the most part, it's very reasonable that you could get consolidation after a huge move in the upward direction. So anything that happens up here is nothing more than a weekly bull flag. Don't lose sight of that. If you do get a breakdown underneath 6970, so 60,970. If you get that breakdown, it's a double top neckline break. If you can spot the lower high, there might be a short opportunity for a retracement into this 52.8. 52.8 as a possible target. But for now, as this is consolidating, that is strong risk appetite for any financial product, really. Again, Bitcoin sort of representing the extreme end of the scale. Let's take a look at new highs versus lows, ticking sideways on the week. So here it is sideways after this big recovery effort that does strike me as bullish. And again, speaks to the broadening nature of the market rally. Let's take a look at the SPX A200R moving in the upward direction. That is again, bullish in terms of breadth. Let's take a look at the SPX A50R bullish in terms of breadth over here as well. So Again, answering the question from the intro, is this just a bull trap? The more I look at the data points, the more I would say we've stacked up evidence that would suggest no, not really. Let's take a look at the RSP equal weight, making a new all-time high here. That, of course, is bullish. Again, broadening nature of the market rally. Uh, QQQE, how do we fare? Not bad, very similar. It's not majorly divergent. So I would sort of take that at face value and say, okay, we're doing all right. If this was different, if this was way down here, larger concern, not the case as of right now. Dow Jones, how we doing? Any sort of breakouts over here? Not yet in transports, watching very closely to see if this finally can stick over the midpoint of the range at 15.7. If this can take place and then a break, probably constructive for the broad market as a whole. We're not there yet, but it's something to at least watch. Probably not important into the end of this week, but over time. Here's volatility. What do we see out of the VIX? Lower high and right back down towards the lows. Remember, the breakdown of this trend line was bullish. There's a lower high underneath on the back test of the trend line. So again, the further we continue to drift in the downward direction, the more bullish I would say that is for the market. Let's take a look at the VIX at complacency zone. So a little bit of a threat there. Uh, remember that you usually don't want to see too much activity or acceptance, I would even just say, at 75. Otherwise, you get into this sort of unhealthy rut of like, okay, Everybody just expects that the market's going to go up. And again, this is even checking myself here a little bit. Everybody just expects that it's going to go up. If there's a large move to the downside, is it possible that this thing lights up to the upside in the VIX signaling an issue with volatility? It's possible. The only thing that I would sort of uh, make you very well aware of is that on the liquidation break into the close of Tuesday, a little bit of a pop, but we did not accelerate. We did not get to 85. We did not get to the midpoint of this as a range. So, you know, in terms of is this something that you want to short the market based off of, I would probably say no. The complacency effect is in force right now, but not enough to go out there and be like, okay, we're going to zero, right? And I think that's mainly been the argument of today's video. Anyhow, let's finish up volatility with the VIX futures moving into a strong contango, continuing to drift lower on the week, lower here in the nine versus 30 day, and the one day VIX as well is also suppressed. All in all, I would say that the evidence probably stacks up more so to argue that this is not a bull trap. We are looking for trend continuation, but we do want to be cautious of combined pullbacks in the QQQ and the IWM. If both of those things take place at the same time, your spy is going to have nowhere to hide. All right. Whereas if the QQQ is a mild pullback and the IWM continues to outperform to the upside, stronger show of strength for the S&Ps remaining resilient and maybe even making a move in the upward direction. If you've made it to this point in the analysis, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for 100K by May. And let's kick off the core list of companies with none other than Apple. What do we see here? Certainly a recapture of the top of the two-day balance range here with a higher low being offered midday. 
over 172. So if we can get follow through in the upward direction, I might be inclined to trade it more so on the bullish side only after I can spot the higher low over 173.75. And the reasoning behind that is that we had prior support turn to resistance, 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 and it did try to offer support here, but when the catalyst breakdown took place, there was no signs of buyers to be found. And if we reference the daily time frame chart here, this is certainly a very strong daily downtrend. Now, I would concede that maybe there's the opportunity for some sort of higher time frame double bottom, but are we anywhere close to the neckline? Not yet. So the daily trend isn't going to reverse instantly and therefore back down on the hourly, I would be more inclined to actually say, what's the opportunity for a possible lower high here up against 173.75? Can we get a pullback and then a lower high, which would start to suggest a head and shoulders? A breakdown underneath 172, maybe this is early next week, gives you a tradable outcome towards the bottom end of the range here, closer to 170. So on Apple, really thinking about lower highs, 173.75 or prove it to me first, not interested in the break, not interested in a runaway freight train, show me the higher low where I can manage my risk up and over 173.75 and maybe we'll consider longs. Let's move along to Microsoft and see what's going on over here. A very mild pullback into the previous high of the balance range over here. And for that reason, I would try to align with longs up against 419.25. We're coming from the latest all-time high. The pullback was very slow and controlled. We don't have a lot of sell side momentum. Notice on today's session, sure, it's that liquidation break off of the open, but buyers repeatedly stepped up at the low of the day session. And if we can turn this into a double bottom one and two over the neckline is bullish. If we sweep it and come back above for a higher low, it's of course the inverted head and shoulders is bullish. So really looking to align with the longs around 419.25. If you do get some sort of lower high underneath, I mean, technically speaking, the risk reward could be there, but I'm not thrilled about trading shorts into this. If we know that the momentum isn't really there, look, at the Monday session. The first hourly bar sets the range of the day and everything else was an inside bar, right? So really trying to, again, align with longs out of Microsoft. Next up, Google. What do we see out of Google? Certainly a beautiful ascending triangle. This will be a top watch into the early stages of tomorrow's session. There is your flat top. And here, of course, is your support trend line. A couple of different outcomes here keep me interested. Sideways consolidation over 150 offers a higher low. And then the setup's in play for early next week or an opening range break to the upside, opening drive to the upside, higher low over 150.115. And we're trading into the all-time high at 153.76. That is your upside. Sellers don't get too excited if you break down through the support trend line. You've really got to show me the lower high underneath 148.60, something that does this, and then we'll retarget the top of the gap and take it from there. That number is 146.25. Next up, we've got Amazon. What's happening with Nancy here? This is a really interesting looking chart simply because we had a balance range and it's been nothing but a struggle at the top of this range to really find follow through in the upward direction. I would start to make the argument that it's just developing a new balance range here at 180.25 as the top end. So so if we can clear that with a higher low, then great. And just as a reminder, there's plenty of room in the upward direction to be trading for. You do not need to be the first one in the door out of Amazon. So let the hourly trend really develop in the upward direction. And we'll trade that rotation towards 185.25. If we're just chopping around in this range, I'm really not as interested. You can clearly see the choppy and indecisive price action. But I would maintain a slightly more bullish edge, noting that if you overlap the two balance areas, this is technically offering a higher low at 176.50. Next up, we've got Nvidia, the one stock to rule them all. Still on the hourly time frame chart, folks. This is a balance range, right? And you can clearly see that there was a huge breakdown underneath the top of 922. And instead of the buyers trying to step up for a break and higher low above the top of the range, clearly you got price acceptance towards the lows. Now, what do we know? We've talked about this setup a couple of times over the last month and a half or so. This is where we have the opportunity to Stevie Wonder it on the open, right? If you have trapped shorts who are stuck here late to the party on today's session, these shorts get nervous. If we open over 905, you're going to manage your risk based on total position size, meaning the number or ultimately the magnitude of dollars wrapped up in the trade. Uh, but the idea is that we can get a thin structure retracement on a very short lived short squeeze from shorts late to the party. All right. So over 905 targets 922. When we get to 922, just like Apple, I would take into consideration that we have potentially an equal slash lower ish high on the daily. And we failed back down into this balance range here. Is it possible that the sellers step up and offer a lower high on 922? 
I would tend to think the answer is yes, right? So any lower highs up against that are certainly decent risk reward opportunity for a trade back in the downward direction towards the bottom end of the range. If this is a balance range and we consider this a look above and fail, the target is always the opposing end of balance. In this case, that's 871.50. So that's your downside. If we open inside of the consolidation range, I think this is a very straightforward trade that, you know, put that directly in a textbook. If you've got a bear flag breakdown, right? That's NVIDIA. Next up, we've got AMD as an honorable mention still in the sort of chip space, even though NVIDIA's uh, IV has certainly come back down to earth. We're doing all right there. AMD, the honorable mention is just that if and when we can clear 180 8360, trying to trade this in the upward direction, right? This is really just building out as a balance range that is worth keeping tabs on. Of course, the same would be true to the downside, but you've got to be in that gap under 172 if you're going to trade the shorts to close the gap at 164.60. Next up, we've got Metaverse. What's going on with Zuckerberg's fantasy land over here? Another aggressive breakdown. So you can see the relative weakness out of the tech sector, even though the S&P sort of held up, right? So when we look at Meta, this is the balance range. Certainly look above and fail has been completed. We've traded to the bottom end of the range. I don't think it's unreasonable for a little bit of a counter trend move. Where is the hourly lower high that can be set? Well, technically speaking, it's just going to be anywhere underneath 501.50. So if you can get a rally that gets going, that's fine. Just understand that when and if we approach this, or if we find an arbitrary lower high, it's totally in alignment with what we see out of this chart. We have highs, lower highs, and an opportunity for lower highs anywhere underneath 501.50. If the buyers were truly strong on this open this morning, which is right here, technically still underneath, but we would have seen opening drive this. Now, all of a sudden, what's the opportunity for an inverted head and shoulders, right? It would have been there on a higher low. Obviously, that's not the case. And instead, we're looking for hourly trend continuation in the downward direction. Just to totally flip the script, here it is. There's maybe your larger head and shoulders just to play devil's advocate, right? So out of meta, I wouldn't be inclined to participate long into that level. I mean, maybe there's something there, but the better opportunity in my view is looking for the lower high, spotting the lower high, trading it back down towards 490 as an equal low. Next up, we've got Tesla. What's going on with Mr. Musk over here? Certainly threatening after a couple days of consolidation now underneath this 182, the possible break and recapture of it. If we look left, there is thin structure overhead and we should probably find a target to be aiming at together. Uh, here we go at 187. Let's go 25. You guys know me with the round numbers only up here as rule number two in the penthouse suites. If we get something that looks like this for tomorrow's session, I think that's a beautiful retest of the daily 50 SMA and maybe another attempt at an inverted head and shoulders. I would just remind you that this was also an attempt at an inverted head and shoulders. It broke out. It lasted for a couple days, maybe even a little bit more consolidation up here, and then it was wiped away. So just understand that the daily trend out of Tesla may be similar to Apple, right? is aggressive in the downward direction and longs should really not overstay their welcome until we have a firm daily trend reversal. You're getting the beginnings of it with lows, higher lows, maybe highs, higher highs. I would really want to see something more constructive here, uh, probably recapturing the daily 50 SMA at minimum, right? Let's move along and talk about Netflix. And we'll go to the hourly time frame charts because the heartbreaker continues to just break hearts here. Um, you know, we thought it was going to be maybe a short here on Tuesday on the lower high offering underneath 623. And then we opened back above 627.50 and it's just a straight line in the downward direction. So I'm sort of interested in retiring Netflix, possibly in preference for AMD in the future. Um, it hasn't really cooperated well with this as an ascending triangle. I mean, the price point's still right. Maybe it makes sense as a swing idea. Uh, but let me know in the comments section. We've been giving giving AMD the spotlight based on an honorable mention sort of protocol. But if you think it should replace Netflix, let me know in the comments and maybe we can make that adjustment into the next uh, sort of couple of months or the next quarter, really, as we wind things down here into the end of March. Let's continue along with two additional ideas and then we are done for today's session. What do we see out of UPS? Certainly a massive move in the downward direction. Huge, huge bearish move here. Um, I believe the CEO was live on air and sort of talked about some of their forecasts, right? But the idea here is where's the lower high? Just where's the lower high? How do we set this up for a possible rejection? Let's get rid of this drawing set. Let's start from scratch and do this together here. Hourly time frame chart. You really want to know where the neckline is of the daily double bottom or double top, excuse me, which is here at 151. Let's go ahead and adjust that. Round numbers only. You guys know the deal. 151, any lower highs underneath that set up continuation in the downward direction in my view, at least down towards this equal low, right? So the idea would be, can we get follow through tomorrow, reject off of the confluence 50 SMA and the neckline of the double top? offer a huge lower high, then rotate back in the downward direction. Keep in mind, earnings are a little bit further down the road late April, but this is the idea out of UPS, considering that the daily trend certainly is in the downward direction, looking to trade those prevailing wins here. I'll change my tone when and if 
UPS, I think, I, did I just call this NVIDIA? If, if UPS can get over 151, uh, we'll trade that in the upward direction. Uh, but as of right now, again, prevailing winds are down. Lastly is, uh, what do we have? Goodness. Oh, let's take a look. So bear with me for just a second. I'm blanking on the name end phase. There we go. I was like thinking of the ticker and like ENPR, ENPH, right? ENPH. There we go. Uh, so instead of scrapping this entire thing, we'll just uh, keep that th that little uh, mix up in there. So end phase, what do we see? Almost the opposite, right? What is this as an opportunity for the double top, uh, double bottom? All right. It's getting, uh, getting a little bit overcooked here, right? Double bottom right at the neckline of the double top, right? One and two here. So this inflection point to me is very interesting out of end phase. So what we'll do is just pop in a level here at 118. And maybe we treat this as a zone up towards, uh, or maybe even down towards, I should say, down towards about 117. So about a dollar zone there. If we can stay over it, it's looking more constructive to me that the double bottom is playing out in the upward direction. Reason being is that the double top, if this was actually going to yield a stronger move in the downward direction, coming off of an equal slide lower high. Let's go to the daily, right? Let's do something like this. You should have probably been looking at at least a move into this equal low. The sellers couldn't really convert. They couldn't really make that happen towards the $100 price point. And now if we get acceptance back over, is there an opportunity for this to maybe offer some sort of ascending triangle type look on the weekly time frame chart? Is there an opportunity to squeeze, uh, you know, maybe some shorts out of this? Certainly an interesting idea and why we've sort of included it in today's episode of the midweek market update. So for tomorrow's session, watching to see if we can get acceptance over 118, 117 as a zone. We do have thin structure off the left. The next big target would be 127.50s, I would say based on the opening print of the large breakdown day, which is over here. That's all I've got for you on today's episode or in today's episode of the Midweek Market Update. If you learned something new or enjoyed the video, let me know down below in the comments section or by giving the video a very simple thumbs up. Remember, we're trying to hit 100K subscribers by May. That gives us about a month to up the subscriber count by about 20,000, if I'm not mistaken. Seems like an ambitious target, but I know and have faith that the Trade Brigade community can get it done. So we'll see you tomorrow morning live up in the penthouse suites at 8.15 Eastern time for the pre-market prep. And with that said, I wish you all a green trading week.